All right. Hello, brothers and friends. Um, we're going to give everybody just another 30 seconds to jump on board. Uh, but as you can see uh, here this afternoon in Carmel, Indiana, joined by our newest Grand High Alpha, Steve Pattison, our CEO of the fraternity, Troy Medley, and then down and on your other screen in Houston, uh, well, excuse me, just outside of Houston, Texas, Frielsburg, is uh, Drew Lynch, our new foundation board chair. So give us just a few more seconds and uh, we'll get started. We're trying to just allow everybody a little chance to get in here. So welcome and we'll get started here shortly. Yes, true. Okay, okay. Well, welcome uh, to our fall uh, donor town hall. We're so pleased you could be here. Um, we've got a sp special presentation from the new leaders, uh, both the fraternity and the foundation uh, in their respective roles. And really, before we jump into that, I just want to go through some housekeeping uh, so that we're all on the same page about how are we going to take questions? Are you going to take questions? Because we are in a, what's known as a webinar mode. So we don't see your faces. We see that you're on there. We've got 48 brothers uh, and friends on this uh, particular webinar. But if you have a question uh, throughout the, the different talks uh, by Steve and Drew and Troy and myself, you can either put it in the chat or you can hang on to it for later because we are gonna have a, a Q and A portion at the end of this. So. Uh, each of us will have a chance to, to share a little bit of information with you, and then uh, we'll have a little dialogue later on. So uh, we'll get started with the program. The first brother for us to introduce uh, and uh, to give some remarks is our 26th Grand High Alpha, and that would be Steve Pattison. To my right, uh, for you uh, watching to my left, uh, Steve is a graduate of our Florida State chapter. And um, he uh, has a, a lengthy uh, volunteer history with Lambda Chi, which also includes serving on the foundation board, board uh, and in the treasurer role for us, as well as being the treasurer of the fraternity Grand High Taw uh, before being gr elected Grand High Alpha at this past uh, General Assembly that just happened in Scottsdale, Arizona. So Steve has been on the job now, I guess, uh, three months. Uh, we're, going to allow him to share a little bit of the fraternity vision and where we're headed uh, with his leadership down the road. I do want to go to the next slide, though, because this is proof that Steve was in college in the 70s and a Lambda Chi there at, uh, at uh, Florida State. So uh, <laughs> with that, I'm going to ask Steve to just give a bit more about uh, his Lambda Chi background, really how he got to this place, and then he'll walk us through uh, a bit more about the plans uh, here for the fraternity. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, just to clarify, in this in that picture on the right, I'm the one in the tie. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so so Dan wanted me to talk a little bit about my Lambda Chi journey uh, real quickly uh, before I kind of get into the, uh, into this slide. And and it really starts with my uh, collegiate experience and just it's important context because it's really what drives me to volunteer today. So I was one that I was the youngest of four children. None of my siblings went to college. My parents didn't go to college. I was the only one that went away to college. And uh, I felt, I, felt uh, I was sort of alone on an island when I went there and I didn't have anybody to talk to about what this collegiate experience was about. And I didn't know anything about Greeks or, or, or Lambda Chi or couldn't even say the Greek alphabet. And, uh, and lo and behold, I got recruited uh, to come to Lambda Chi. Uh, that I, I felt at home, I connected uh, with my brothers. It was a great uh, opportunity for me to welcome me into a family and really help me get through college. And what's really important about this story is I made it a full two quarters before I dropped out. A lot of it was financial. I was putting myself through and decided that it was a good idea to work construction instead of go to college. Uh, about two quarters of work in construction and having constant calls from my brothers saying, you really need to get back on campus. They really urged me to come back and I finished my degree 
in finance accounting and, and had a, a, a great career as an executive in finance in large companies. Uh, it's a different career path and it certainly changed my life. So I, I feel that I owe a lot to Lambda Chi because it was sort of that guiding light that got me in the true north direction that I needed to go in. Uh, I, I didn't have much uh, opportunities early uh, in my career to, to volunteer a lot. Most of my volunteer work was at the at my Zeta level. And uh, uh, our Zeta actually got, uh, our chapter got closed in 2010. And uh, shortly after that, I got invited by the, to a foundation event in South Florida. And I met all these brothers from other colleges and sort of the light bulb went off. You know, we all had a shared experience and it's not about your Zeta, it's about the greater fraternity. And I wanted to do something and uh, to help, you know, pay it forward for everything that they helped me in my life. So I got recruited to be on the foundation board, served three terms. Um, and, uh, and then I got recruited to be on the, uh, the Grand High Zeta. Uh, liked it a term, as you mentioned, to, to, to be the Grand High Tall. And then uh, currently got uh, and was fortunate enough to get elected to the last General Assembly for, to this role. So it's been an interesting experience for me, a great experience. Uh, I'm really looking forward uh, uh, to, to continuing to lead this great group, this great board, and this great organization. Uh, it, you want, I'll shift real yeah. quickly to the strategic vision. This is really a shared vision, uh, not just uh, my, my vision, but the Grand Hyatt uh, Zeta's vision of where we'd like to go. And to give you a sense of the process, we, about five years ago, we uh, had a strategic planning committee. Uh, it was led at the time by Jeff Sturman as chair of that committee, who later uh, became the Grand High Alpha um, preceding me. And, uh, and, and really, it was a bottom up, how do we, how, you know, if we were to create Lambda Chi today, we were to start over, what would it look like? And we, we spent a lot of time thinking about that and, and how do we evolve to today's Generation Z to, to appeal to Gen Z as opposed to millennials and Gen Xs and the baby boomers like myself? How do we make this a relevant product for, for our incoming freshmen? Uh, and, and we spent a lot of time behind that. Our mission uh, is pretty uh, aspirational. We inspire, we'd like to inspire and equip men to lead an ethical life of growth, service, and leadership. And the centerpiece of our, our, our vision is growth. Uh, we think the world needs more leaders. If you think about what's happened in the last uh, five years, both civil unrest, um, in, uh, interesting politics, let's say, uh, and, and, and a lot of other issues around the world, we can't have enough leaders that, uh, that share our vision and share our values. Uh, so this plan was built, and if we go to the next slide real quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, uh, but we continue to go down this, uh, the path of this plan. I'm not going to go through this entire strategy map, but some of the cornerstones of the plan are to transform Lambda Chi into the premier men's service learning and leadership organization. And again, that sounds very noble and aspirational, but we believe that we're actually on track to do that. We had some slight headwinds over this last four years, it's called COVID. Uh, we actually were able to um, evolve, invest and grow during this COVID period, unlike some of our Greek peers. Uh, one of the cornerstones of differentiating what, what we'd like to offer to incoming freshmen is dynamic programming that really provides them with uh, life skills and leader skills outside of the classroom. And it's not just the officers, but every man in, in the chapter. And we're, uh, Troy's gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, in more detail a little bit later of what we're doing. It's incredibly powerful tools. It's attractive to Gen Z who are a lot more practical than their predecessors. Uh, they're not just interested in getting together with a bunch of guys. They wanna know what they're gonna get for their dues, for their investment of their time. We've gotta give them something tangible and that's what this plan is built on. Uh, we uh, To make this thing happen, we're going to require uh, alumni engagement. Uh, we're working down, uh, down the path of, uh, of strengthening that. We need to partner with other like-minded organizations, uh, and we need to leverage technology. But a lot of this requires investment. And uh, as Dan and, and Troy will talk about, uh, we, we've had some successes in, in, in our investment, but we really need more. And, then, and I guess the last thought I can leave you with uh, we've sort of launched the rocket. Uh, we've been in orbit because of COVID. We're about to accelerate. And the fuel we need to kind of keep going is uh, the, the generosity of the foundation and those donors that have been giving. So with that, uh, Dan, I'll turn it back over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. And we're so pleased uh, that you could share remarks with uh, especially our donors uh, on the call. Uh, th I think this might be your first act as uh, Grand High Alpha with, with this many uh, brothers. So it's, it's great to have them uh, all out there through the interwebs, as the kids say. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to then uh, Drew Lynch. He's the newest elected uh, chairman of the foundation board. Uh, that his term started 
uh, as the chair of the foundation board July 1st of this year. And uh, Drew comes to us um, from a long history in uh, the energy uh, trading space um, and uh, professionally. And he uh, really is a, is a Texas, Texas kid, uh, having gone to Texas State uh, there in San Marcos and was there uh, in the 70s. And, and again, proof that Drew was there in the 70s. I think we have his composite. Yep, there we go. We've got his composite uh, up there. And he is, uh, so if you're looking at 1975, yeah, there we go. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Our team here is amazing. Uh, that is Drew. That is Drew as a handsome young undergrad with long hair. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> or I'll be fired. But um, uh, just... Uh, um, I'll let Drew introduce himself a little bit further, but he's been he's been on the foundation board uh, in his third term here now, uh, so doing a lot with uh, the foundation. Been very generous, and uh, uh, Drew, I'll kick it over to you to share a bit more about yourself and uh, the foundation, our vision, what we're what we're working towards. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for attending this afternoon. We've got important work to do, and. Uh, Yes, that is a picture. I did have hair back then, which is kind of a miracle. Uh, but you know, times were times were different, and I think one of the things we're going to talk about is being relevant. And uh, my time, uh, I actually was initiated in 1974. Uh, it was Vietnam was winding down. We had a lot of brothers coming back, and it was probably a little bit more of a social experience. But it, the brotherhood really helped support that. It gave people a place to go. It gave people a sense of purpose and it helped to develop them into the men they are today. So I've always been enamored with that. And fortunately in my career, I've been able to live all over the world. And uh, I've lived in Houston seven different times. I've lived in most all international locations. My whole background was turnarounds and startups. So taking broken businesses and fixing them and starting new businesses. And so very exciting. But one of the things that I found really interesting was all over the world, I ran into Lambeth guys. And one of the things that became very clear is we had a common bond. And when you're sitting across the table negotiating with someone and they're a Lambeth guy, it just makes it so much easier. And I just like, this is something very special. And it just really compelled me to give back more and more and more. Uh, as time went on. So as Dan said, I've been on the foundation board now my third term. And when I originally joined the foundation board, uh, Mark Bauer was the CEO. Great guy. And we've been through a lot of turbulent times. But I remember going to Mark, and Steve can probably attest to this too. Um, I remember going to Mark and saying, you know, I'm really excited to be here, but what are we, what are we here for? And what are we asking for? Because we had all these different uh, initiatives going on. It wasn't very clear. And I was concerned. I have to go out and ask people to donate money, but I'm not even sure what I'm telling them to donate for. And that was the beginning of really, I think, a streamlining and a lot of housekeeping at the foundation and making sure that we could answer the question, how are we relevant? How is Lambakai relevant? How do we impact lives? And so with that, uh, if you go to the next slide, um, what we've done so far is we've given over $2 million to the fraternity as, uh, as capital for new initiatives. And if you haven't had a chance to see the Leadership uh, Skills Academy, uh, I encourage you to take a look at it. This is something that is, I think, revolutionary. It's why we are relevant. Like I said earlier, whenever I was uh, a young initiative, uh, I was, it was more of a social. Now it's social. We're also getting these young men prepared for a career. They're coming out with skills. They're coming out with skills they can demonstrate. And I thought that was important, but it really became important when my wife said to me, she's a Comega, she said, Wow, that Skills Academy, that is that sets you guys apart. And for someone outside of the fraternity or the foundation to actually recognize that told me we really had something special here. And it just could further ignited our passion for continuing to develop this. 
Uh, so in addition to the Skills Academy, you've heard about the Ideal Man program, and we've helped fund all those things. And that's what we've been doing as a foundation. Our job as a foundation is to help raise money for educational purposes for the fraternity. And if you go to the next slide, we'll talk a little about uh, this transformational campaign that we're going through. Um, you know, the again, trying to be relevant, and we know that we have to evolve to be relevant. We have to change with the times. And one of the things that I learned through all of this was uh, as an undergraduate, we kind of looked at nationals as something to avoid. Uh, I think now nationals plays a much different role. Now we call it Office of Administration, but we play a lot different role today because developing programs like the Leadership Academy, it's very hard, if not impossible, to do at a Zeta level. So I think you've got to uh, look at the national uh, group for help and support. And I think they've done a really good job of doing that. So we want to build on that. We want to continue to embark upon new endeavors. And the way I look at it is we, we have an obligation as Lamb Kai's to give back. Uh, I believe it's we only have not only have a commitment, but it is an obligation because we all got something out of it. I got something out of it as undergrad. I got many more things out of it after I graduated as I ran into people through my business career. Uh, and I think that it just continues to grow and it continues to reinforce the main purposes and the goals of the fraternity. So we have a once in a lifetime opportunity, you might say, to do something very impactful, especially with things like Leadership Academy. Uh, and we have the opportunity to give a, a lasting legacy that we can look back on and be proud of that we help Lamakai stay relevant and grow. And with that, Dan, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Drew. That was uh, fantastic. I'm sure uh, we'll we'll be entertaining some questions a little bit later, maybe about that composite too that we showed. So thanks so much uh, uh, for that. <laughs> We're going to move to Brother Troy Medley. Uh, he's from that other part of the state in Missouri that I'm not from. Uh, that's our inside joke. Sorry, I'll let you in on a little bit of that. He's going to provide a fraternity report here. I know you've seen him before. We've had a number of town halls where Troy's been involved, so not uh, any more uh, in the way of background uh, to present Troy. Uh, but if you haven't seen uh, the General Assembly uh, video that we have out there, I think on our YouTube pages and Facebook, I really encourage you to go out there. I've heard nothing but good things. Troy said, so that's my compliment to you for the day. That's my daily compliment to Troy. But uh, you should, seriously, you should go out and watch that. It's uh, it's inspiring for our whole brotherhood and hopefully gets shared beyond here. But we're, I'm asking Troy to go ahead and dig a little bit deeper in the fraternity. Um, Steve painted a good good picture of that uh, from the 30,000 foot view. And now we're asking Troy, just take that a bit deeper, give us a little bit more uh, detail on that. Sure, thanks, Dan. So I don't get to see a picture of my 20 year old self. <laughs> we were scared to do that. I needed, we I needed to, to pick do that. Me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I want to kind of provide the background for why this revolutionary, not evolutionary strategic plan is, is so necessary and give you a status report so I can highlight how the, that seed capital, that $2 million has been spent and the results that we're, that we're seeing as a result. Um, can I see my, my stats? Uh, some of you have probably seen the stats uh, pertaining to how well men are faring, but there have been some updates and new studies that have come out in the last two to three weeks. So I want to give you a, a, a current understanding of what's going on in the lives of, of, of young men uh, and the need that exists and why Lambda Chi Alpha is, is so needed in terms of a, today, in a prescription for what ails society. Since 2015, men have stopped going to college. There's a, f a million fewer men in school today than there are women. Uh, we make up less than 40% of college enrollment. And when we start, we are not finishing. For every 100 women that started in 2019 that will graduate this year with a bachelor's degree, there will only be 74 men. So there's, you had something to pull you through. It was Lambda Chi Alpha. I had something to pull me through. It was Lambda Chi Alpha. Young men don't have anything um, they're adrift. They come to campus. It's foreign. Uh, so many uh, students on campus today are first generation. 
and they need something to give them a, a home so that they can stick it out when times get tough. And we all remember times get tough. Uh, and because of that, because of the significant lack of resiliency um, in Gen Z, we've seen an epidemic in self-harm. Uh, the statistic that we started sharing about two years ago from the CDC was suicide from uh, amongst men 10 to 24 increased 56% in a 10 year period. CDC updated their numbers two weeks ago. Um, since two, uh, 2020, it's increased by another 8%. And men are four and a half times more likely to take their own life uh, uh, than young women. Uh, and it's an, it's an epidemic and it's something that we've experienced that I'll touch on uh, a little bit more when we talk about solutions in a minute. Now, while, while men are flailing, while men are begging for a life raft and something to give them meaning, something to give them support, the one thing that historically has done that, which is fraternity involvement, is declining. Fraternity enrollment in general decreased by 17% from 2015 to 2020. That's when Gen Z came to school. At Lambda Chi Alpha, it shrank by 35% during that period of time. So we, we were declining as an industry. Lambda Chi Alpha was declining, declining at almost twice the rate, uh, which told the, the Grand High Zeta that, hey, we have to rethink everything we're doing, which is where that, that strategic plan, uh, what's what, was the genesis of, it, of its need. And, and when you talk about the opportunity, the opportunity to dramatically impact and improve society, only 8%, eight out of 100 young men that walk on a college campus join a fraternity. Uh, so they're, they're begging for help. The evidence says they need help, but we as an industry are not giving them the outstretched hand that they need to pull them through. So Lambda Chi Alpha has decided it's going to be very, very different. Uh, I want to show you one more slide that really highlights the, the immediate need to provide solutions for young men. This shows what happened to male enrollment after COVID. Uh, we had a seven, everybody else went back to school in 2021. Well, the women did. Men are seven times more likely to have decided, you know what, I'm going to take a construction job or I'm going to do anything else but go back to school. So we have to give them a reason. We have to give them something to come back to. So if you talk about what we have done with the capital, Mike, uh, we, and I think COVID, although it was a, a horrific thing to live through, it gave the fraternity an opportunity to rethink every program we have. Uh, there were no sacred cows because we had to evolve and it, it helped us you know, get off high center and, and really uh, gave us uh, an aggressive need uh, to improve. And the first thing we did was we partnered with the, the foundation and we, we, we got the research we need to understand today's student. And we partnered with a group called Dyad and we partnered with uh, a group called Sparks Research. And that told us what makes a successful chapter. What are the attributes that lead to a healthy Zeta? And then with that, what are the attributes that lead to a healthy brother? And then with Sparks Research, we were able to go out and figure out, okay, well, how do we then attract that student? Because the 8% per the dyad research that come to campus wanting to be a, in a fraternity are the ones that are also more likely to value social rather than values-based programming. So that means there's 92% over here that we can start to talk to about the values of Lambda Chi Alpha and recruit against the industry. And we started doing that heavily, utilizing social media, utilizing different marketing tools based on this research, uh, which has allowed us to grow by 19%. So we arrested that decline and we started to grow. We're the only fraternity that grew every year over the last three years. So we grew during COVID, we're up 19%. And if we hit the number we think we're gonna hit this year, we'll be back at our 2015 number in terms of, of active members uh, by the end of this year. So we have more members, but what type of members are they? And we can tell what type of members they are by the good works they do in the classroom, the good work they do in the community. And uh, our uh, all member G our GPA has increased to 3.15, which is now ahead of the all uh, male GPA at our campuses. And it's the highest GPA we've had since 2010. So our men are doing better in the classroom. Last year, we partnered with Movember. Movember, you guys probably know this grow a mustache and we raise money for men's health, mental health, physical health. Uh, we were the 
largest donor, the largest fundraiser, our chapter is for the largest fundraiser for Movember during our first year as a partner. We beat 15 other fraternities. This year, our goal is to grow that by 25%. And Movember does so much more. Movember provides content for an ideal man when it comes to physical health, mental health, and emotional health. And we also were able to utilize um, the, the funding that we received from, from the foundation to partner with the Jed Foundation, which is the expert on, on mental health on 18 to 25 year old men. And they have a, a, a tool called uh, the You Lifeline. So if a brother is in need, if a brother needs to talk to somebody, if a brother thinks his brother is uh, potentially suicidal, there's a hotline. During our first year in partnership with Jed, of our 8,000 members at the time, we had 632 unique calls. So 632 of our brothers called and asked for help. And this was during the deepest moments of COVID. And I can't prove that the Movember content and the JED relationship have, have, have impacted the stat I'm going to show you in a second. But anecdotally, I think it's true. During my first two years as CEO, we had 19 suicides. In the 18 months since, we've had zero. So our men are doing better. Academically, they're doing better uh, in terms of service, and it, they, all evidence tells us they're doing better emotionally, and they have a support system they didn't have before. So and I think that's far and away the most important thing that we can do for them. Uh, and they, they, they've asked us, they've continuously asked us, can you teach me how to be a better man? Can you teach me how to be a better professional? And as, as Drew pointed out, uh, you were kind enough to donate the $2 million we needed to create world-class programming. And the Leadership Skills Certification Academy launched, uh, we had a soft launch at the High Alpha Summit last year. We were able to credential 136 of our officers last year. This year, our, our goal is to increase that by 30%. And then we're going to increase that next year. We'll uh, have 50% uh, of our officers the next year, 75%. Because this creates the small business administration skills necessary to make sure that our chapters are well run. And if our chapters are well run, then and our officers don't have to spend all the time dealing with the stuff we dealt with, then they can focus on brotherhood and they can focus on service. And we just launched the Ideal Man program at uh, the General Assembly. And we've already had 76 brothers, our associate members uh, finish Learning Journey One. We'll have 500 finish uh, by the end of this term. Our goal is to have 2,000 at the end of next term up to, uh, and have all 4,000 associates uh, finish learning journey one next year. We start learning journey two next year. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the rudimentary business programming from leadership skills, and we're going to make that available to every one of our members. Because what we found in the real world is we did a great job of teaching the the high taw about accounts receivable and accounts payable, but nobody else in the chapter understands what that definition is. We've talked to the high delta about a sales cycle and a CRM and asking consultative questions, but nobody else in the in the chapter understands what he's talking about. So we have to we have to season this this information uh, throughout the the membership base, and we're going to begin that next year, and that'll then be available to every one of our brothers. Um, and then the last thing I, I want to uh, talk to you about that, that shows that this programming is working is when we did our dyad study the first year, uh, our, our net promoter score was 42. And for those of you that do net promoter scores in your business, it's, it's pretty good, but it was the seventh highest amongst fraternities. Uh, last year, it was 49, which was the second highest, and the highest was 50. So our men are saying they're much happier uh, than than they were, and they're much more satisfied. And I'll give you, I'm going to end on an anecdotal story because I heard Drew call us nationals and then the office administration, which is the perfect illustration for how the culture has changed. My first uh, semester as CEO, I had a 45 minute call with the brothers at Akron explaining to them why they should be paying their dues and the services they got for that money. When I showed up this morning, there were four guys waiting outside at, Last night at midnight, four guys from Akron decided they wanted to come uh, and see the office administration museum we've built, and they showed up and we hung out this morning. So uh, the culture is changing. I think the office administration, because of the tools we've been able to provide, are now seen as a net gain instead of a net, uh, 
Well, we, you know, we fought at nationals. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we just want to say thank you because we wouldn't have been able to do this without the, the donors and what, what you've been able to make available. Well, thanks. For, I'm glad you didn't introduce me, right? I'd have, you know, asked them for a Mason Circle gift but, right there on the spot. Well, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, only, only a 20 year old at one o'clock in the morning would go, yeah, let's drive four hours. <laughs> But hey. it is full circle, though. Mm -hmm. It is full circle how that came through. So, well, thank you, Troy. Uh, appreciate that. Again, any questions you have, if you want to put them in the chat because you don't want to lose them, do that. Uh, we'll, I'll wrap up and then we'll have the Q&A section uh, coming up. So here's all my stuff. Uh, you can read that. Great. Um, we'll, before state? we, it's it, on the north right side of the state. Um, <laughs> before I get into uh, to a co couple of the slides, I want to just touch on a, a few things that uh, Troy, Steve, and uh, Drew had brought up, which is the importance of the seed capital. And we named that very intentionally, seed capital. That's what got Leadership Skills started. It's the money we needed. Cap partnering with Kaplan, that was a $2 million project, and that was a deal in and of itself, the way that got structured. The carrying cost of the accesses, to Kaplan and the content because it's on their learning management system at full bore will be at uh, half a million dollars on that. So leadership skills is going to continue to need an influence of money, which we're calling early growth, pairing that with a typical businesses uh, trajectory up. But ideal man now in its full development is going to need seed capital money. We were able Troy and his team to hire over Dr. Simon Taylor. I think you've gotten a chance to meet uh, online, but but Simon, you know, is coming to us. He was with Kaplan. He helped to uh, develop a lot of this. He had such a positive experience in doing that with the fraternity team. He credits that to why he wanted to come here. In fact, he said at a special reception with the foundation, he wants to do good in this. To him, this was the way he could do good through men uh, and this investment of his. He's moving from England, folk, the UK. He's coming here whenever the visas go through. So um, it's significant. Uh, I think that's another anecdote that's important to say is that this is going worldwide and people are resonating with it. And he also has a son himself. So he'll glad, hopefully be a Lemdekai here uh, in the years ahead. But with that, why I bring that up, we still have to have more seed cap dollars. Just this year, we've got to raise more than a million. Uh, now, some of you on this, on this webinar, thank you. Uh, you, you're contributing, you know, I'm, and I saw your names before this and, and you're in for it. And we appreciate that. And the way you, everybody on this call can be involved, not, not just your giving, but really it's opening up the network and introducing our foundation team, which is growing by the way, so that we can have more relationships and we can secure greater funds for the fraternity. Um, and, and that's within our strategic plan. That's We've called for that, a much greater presence on the front line uh, for fundraising. But help us with that. Help us to open doors. You've got brothers from your classes, you know, uh, that, that have done very well for themselves. Help us out there. One opportunity we have, and we can kind of roll into the slides now, to do that, and it's on the very near horizon, is our founding day, November 2nd, 1909. On Founders Day, we've been uh, celebrating by um, uh, asking a number of, uh, of brothers to commit to being a Challenge Day ambassadors, and I'm going to share a bit more about that here as well. We also ask them to help us connect with those brothers, and that's what I'm asking you to do here today. Uh, if you sign up to be ambassador, even if you don't sign up to be ambassador, you can still help us connect. The goal with this day is to get brothers, uh, well, actually giving them knowledge that we exist. Uh, some, some folks don't know that the Educational Foundation exists. I know it's a shock, uh, but once you start going through a list of brothers from your time period and realizing they've never donated, it's probably because they don't know the Educational Foundation's there. So the goal for the day, we, 1909, our founding date, we'd love to have that many brothers donate. Last year, it was 1585 was the total number. We need, we really want to be at 1909. Um, and then contributing uh, over a million, I mean, we say a million dollars, we're always shooting for more. And so um, contributions will, will go to the We Believe Fund. So that's the greatest area need for the fraternity. It's also the operations for the foundation. So this is, uh, th these are the three uh, theme uh, pieces for us with Founders Day Challenge. We'll move into the next slide. Just again, a little bit more information about the day. 
This year, it'll actually be 1909 minutes uh, honoring our founding, and that'll start on the second uh, in the morning, and it'll actually run through the third at 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. That'll be 1909 minutes. So if the first day doesn't go as you planned and your chapter's not in the lead, you've got a chance uh, to make up ground on November 3rd, uh, which is great. Uh, and it is, of course, our, our largest uh, alumni engagement opportunity of the year that's that wide scale. And everybody will get messages on this, but it means a lot more when it comes from one of you as their close brothers. Um, this will su uh, support the grant funding that we give, of course, to the uh, fraternity for their programs and, and the staff resources there. Um, our goal, our strategic plan calls for us to fully fund the fraternity. And this is one of the vehicles in which we can get there by growing donor participation, which over time will, uh, you know, will, will uh, provide us that opportunity. I also think, and this is a totally aside, but I think this next generation, this Gen Z, every time I've interacted with them, we ask them to give back, they do it. Uh, I think they may be one of the more philanthropic generations we ever see in our time on the earth. We'll, we'll test that 25 years from now. Let's watch this video back and we'll see if that came true. So we'll, still here. There's a, <laughs> we'll keep you around. <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, we'll move to the next slide then. Um, I just want, we want to thank a couple uh, different groups. First is our uh, Founders Day Challenge Committee, chaired by John Schmidt um, and the rest of the uh, great brothers on the call. We'll go to the next slide, which is all the ambassadors who have signed up so far. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list. We're updating as we get new ambassadors, but you can see a good head start to that 150 uh, goal we've got set. We will go to the uh, next slide then. And here's uh, how ambassadors really do help us. We ask them to challenge 10 different brothers. We ask them to set a goal of $55,000, 50,000. Oh, maybe I'm having trouble with my glass, $500. Uh, was that too high? <laughs> Uh, and share with your networks, uh, share with your networks the opportunity. Uh, you can make a donation right now. If you become an ambassador, you can make a donation now. If you're not going to be an ambassador, you can still go on and make a, a donation now. It'll all roll and be counted for Founders Day Challenge. Yes, it's November 2nd to 3rd, but the page is already live. Uh, so there's there's the reality of that. If you want, as you're, if you're staring at your computer screen and not doing this from your phone, you can actually scan that QR code right now. You can go to the bit.ly link as an alternative and you can get started. You will uh, set a goal, you'll pick a team. So you would pick uh, your chapter and we do have uh, inactive chapters uh, that are up there. I'm looking at Steve and also at Drew. Um, actually Eastern Michigan, I think was in the lead today when I looked last and they're inactive. So everyone can participate and be involved. It, this supports Lambda Chi's <clears throat> everywhere uh, when we do uh, when we do Founders Day uh, Challenge. So uh, thank you for the time on that. Please help us uh, out by being an ambassador. And uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and just take some questions. Are we gonna exit out of the uh, slideshow presentation? Good, we'll be bigger on screen. So I'm gonna get fed questions uh, from our team here in the room and then um, we'll circulate them around. And if you have a question that you want to ask uh, in real time, I think you can raise your hand with the little uh, raise your hand feature through the Zoom and, um, and you'll actually be put on so you can ask it uh, orally. We'll hang tight for you. Type those out. All right, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Ray, go ahead. I just want to let you know that chat is disabled, so no one was uh -oh. able to put questions in. So we'll That's all. Questions. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Uh, just, just a side comment. Uh, I met with Mike Bauer uh, probably in the 80s or 90s. I was a high pie for UConn at the time, and we were regaining our charter. He helped me do it. We've since lost it again. <laughs> Uh, but at the time, I, I laid into him about uh, Lambda Chi and any other organization should have an endowment fund that does nothing but grow and that uh, all charitable uh, outflows from the fund should be based on 
the endowment earnings, but never from the base, so that the base is constantly growing. Now, I don't know if you ever listened to me or not, but I'll leave you with that thought. Well, no, Ray, that's great. Uh, we believe the same thing here too. In fact, uh, over the last three years, since I've gotten here, the board's been very diligent about that. Uh, we're indexed in amazing uh, Vanguard funds, so low loads, low fees for us there. And um, the growth over the 10-year horizon that the board's been diligent about the investment uh, plan, uh, it's seen 8% uh, year-on-year growth. Uh, and that includes what we're seeing here with the little dip, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than a little dip uh, in, the, in the market this last year. But uh, uh, do appreciate that. Yeah, it's it, the endowment, depending on which day we look at it and where the Dow's at, uh, you're roughly 13 million now um, in endowed assets. We thought Ralph will help raise, raise his hand. Ralph, we've got you on, but why didn't you just come down to the office? Go ahead, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> you got him? Yeah, oh. sorry. I think we muted you, Ralph. I, I double clicked, sorry. How's that? That better? We gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, good. Gentlemen, uh, fine presentation. Uh, great data. Love to get a copy of those slides, by the way. Uh, and the suicide data is uh, quite personal to me for the campus I come from. So that's uh, a great progress. Uh, I had something a bit off the wall, but, but built on the phrases that uh, Steve and, uh, and Troy used, and also Drew to some degree, uh, equipping men, uh, the, the dynamic programming and the requiring alumni engagement. Uh, I would like to see a, a discussion, maybe not here, uh, but amongst you all with uh, your boards about training our alumni to be better boards, to be better able uh, as not just high pies or a group of alumni advisors, but al also as members of an alumni board to be able to uh, be uh, trained well enough so that they can even uh, lower our risk even more and develop uh, adults and mature behavior a lot faster. Your turn. May I? Go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, yes, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Um, we've, one thing that I didn't uh, walk through today was just kind of how we've trained, changed our, our forward facing support. Um, you know, a few years ago, we moved from the ELC model to a chapter support coach model. And we realized that we were really able to help the high alpha, but there wasn't holistic uh, support and improvement throughout the, the high zeta. So we added training specialists for the for the delta, for the tau, for the kappa, for the phi, and we saw incremental improvement. And then we looked at each other and we were like, okay, we, we're getting this backwards. If we don't provide a significant amount of support for the high pi and help the high pi create an effective alumni advisory board, this is all for naught. So this year we've, we've invested in a, uh, a support specialist specific for, for the high pi, and we're working to recreate Neville Advisors College so we can develop a, a, a more relevant and holistic 360 uh, program for high pies so that they not only are, are learning best practices, but then they have a mentor within the, the high pie network so nobody has to do anything alone for the first time. They have somebody who's, who, who's an expert uh, at this incredibly difficult role to be their, to be their steward. And then we've, we've made it available for that all of the, the certifications and all the programs within leadership skills are available for free to, uh, to all of our high pies. We're gonna pay for that obviously because we want them to understand the, the skills and the tools that are being used by our officers. Uh, and since not all of them come from the, the world of business, these are skills that they need to be able to help the tall or help the, um, the, the high alpha. So, yeah, we and I, I met with uh, two gentlemen um, that are on the alumni control board from, from Dallas, uh, from TCU on Tuesday. They, they came in and they have a lot of different notes for how they've uh, built uh, a successful alumni advisory board, which we're going to be working on to help scale across uh, the platform.
the, the luckiest thing that we have today is technology. Whereas uh, 10 years ago, you didn't have the means to be able to scale best practices across an international network. Now we do. So you know, shame on us if we don't take what works and make it available to everybody in the easiest format uh, for them to utilize possible. Yep. I, I know Steve's got a comment, so I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Yeah, Ralph, well. Ralph you, talk on a, you touched on a subject, um, alumni engagement, and as Troy likes to say, alumni enrichment. enrichment. Um, that's a very critical part of our strategic plan. And, and quite frankly, one of my goals over the next four years is to really accelerate our engagement of alumni. We need alumni to support our men individually through mentoring. Uh, we need them to support at the chapter level uh, in, in the manner that you described. And clearly through the foundation, we need their uh, financial support to help fuel a lot of this programming and other initiatives that we have. And quite frankly, I don't think we've done a good enough job of uh, really reaching out the wider tent. We've got over 200,000 living alumni. Very small number of them are involved in, in certain ways. Um, uh, our, we will be committed, and I think Drew feels the same way, our collective organizations really need to do a better job of engaging alumni and providing them enrichment so that they want to uh, then uh, volunteer their time and talent uh, to, to our, our men and, and their treasure to our foundation. So uh, that's a very, very high priority uh, for this organization over the next four years. We've got Ronald here. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. We've got Ronald now. Uh, we're opening it up for you here, Ronald. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Uh, good to see you again, Dave. This is Ron Madreski from Grand Rapids. Um, I uh, was inspired by uh, George Spasick, uh, whose conference room you're sitting in right now. I can see the name there. Uh, from the early 60s, uh, Michigan Sigma. And our uh, fraternity brothers have pretty much stuck together for decades and decades. I don't see that happening much anymore. Uh, and also, I found that now that I'm retired as an executive from the aerospace industry, I can be more like a grandparent, spend time uh, uh, mentoring. So I've been mentoring students for the last five years at a local level. And I think that's one of the elements that may be missing is uh, getting the alumni engaged so that they can mentor. And I'm talking about the ones that have time that are retired, not st still running, you know, companies and stuff like that. And I often thought about instead of just being helping out one university, the one you went to, what about helping out a number of chapters in a region that you live in? And, you know, we have Zoom, we have technology today, so it makes it a lot simpler to do those kinds of things. Has that ever been uh, thought of, perhaps? Yeah, if, if I can address this, Ron, um, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, today, uh, technology separates geographic proximity and allows uh, our alumni members to engage with our student members just about anywhere. Uh, where, where I came, uh, I, I served on my university's board uh, prior to serving on this board. Uh, they did a very good job of creating a platform that matchmaked, if you will, uh, by career interest and, and that sort of thing of uh, alumni from all over the country and all over the world, quite frankly, with students uh, in, in, a, in a mentoring uh, program. And I think that something like that could be emulated, particularly with the technology we have. That's sort of the one of the things I'd like to see us uh, spend more time and effort kind of looking at strategically, figuring out respectively between our organizations where, where this ball fits and then going ahead and executing that over the near term. At the next town hall, we'll have some concrete updates. It is in process. And Ron, appreciate that. And I, for the younger generation, they're so unique uh, because I've seen them get, I've seen them at get togethers, um, but many of them actually for their jobs and work actually go out across the country where they have to locate. But technology is an amazing uh, leveler in the field because I find that they're still staying in touch up through the, the way technology works today. I mean, I bet you don't know, but, you know, our students today, they don't, they don't recruit by going and knocking on the door of the dorm room. They Snapchat each other. Uh, and at the end of the day, they say, did it, did, how many Snapchat, you know, tags did I get? Okay. 
Drew got 10 and I only got five. So, you know, Drew's ahead. But that's how they recruit today is through Snapchat, which is a kind of kind of remarkable, hard for me to understand. I don't have it. But uh, but uh, just it's it's amazing how how technology can keep us together. And I think, as you've heard, you know, there's a, a, a focus on leveraging technology, and that's going to be a piece of the, of the plan on alumni engagement going forward. Bill's question. Chat. OK. Um, where's, where's his, his question was in the chat. Um, it was no, asked, Bill's question kind of moved up on the screen. Right. Um, yeah. OK. But can, I think it's, can you read it? Yeah. Um, Lambda Chi has a history of being inclusive and the emphasis on being more relevant to Gen Z makes us even more important. In many years of our country, there are movements that negatively impact gay and, and trans men. Uh, what is the fraternity doing to provide support for our gay and trans brothers? Uh, well, there's a significant amount of curriculum around inclusivity within the, the Ideal Man program. Uh, and this has been kind of part and parcel to the Lambda Chi Alpha experience uh, throughout our history. Uh, if I take a look at the numbers, uh, are those that identify, um, I think it increased by 3% in the last five years. So we're actually the, the most inclusive fraternity as measured by dyad, as measured by the nine. And the net promoter score is, uh, is, is increasing and increasing at the same rate as, as, um, as the fraternity at large. So we're gonna to continue to invest in programming that helps people um, see a, a, a human as a human, as a man as a man. Uh, and we're gonna keep looking at the numbers to make sure that what our brother is experiencing matches the, the desired outcome uh, that I think we all have, want uh, for our, our organization. Yeah, if, I, if I could also just address at a broader level, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, so a task force was set up that actually just sunsetted with the last General Assembly of, of bro brothers and alumni uh, to address the broader uh, diversity, equity, inclusion topic. And uh, they came up with a long laundry list of recommendations. And we're now in the uh, implementation mode. Uh, what I've done is, is in setting up the committees of, of the Grand Isaiah and the General Fraternity, I've included members of that task force on every working committee to ensure that those recommendations get seen through to completion. Uh, and they're in a lot of different areas. So much broader than just one segment of diversity, it's really the, the broader area. And quite frankly, we have to grow and to survive and to be relevant to this generation. We're going to have to fish in a wider, you know, open our tent, fish in a wider uh, pool. Uh, and, and we are uh, continuing to work. I know your staff is working really hard to train our, our rush chairman on, on how to do that and, 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 to, and, to, and to have programming for our brothers to be more inclusive going forward. JD had a question he wanted you to, uh, if you can quickly explain Movember once again, but he also wanted to clarify that your statistics that you read on the suicide data was accurate. Yeah, during my first two years, we had 19 suicides. My first Sunday in Indianapolis, when they were unloading boxes, was I got a call about the first suicide, and you know I just was not <clears throat> cognitively or emotionally ready uh, for what we were about to experience, this avalanche of human pain that, that our brothers were experiencing. Over the last 18 months, we've had zero. Now, there's a lot. It's not just Lambda Chi that's rushing in to provide support. Schools are really trying to, to, to figure out what's wrong and how can we help. But um, I, I'm going to proudly say that thanks to the, the Educational Foundation, we were really first at getting a lot of this research and a lot of these support programs uh, into the field. So, uh, yeah, those those stats are right. So, Movember, Movember is a it's a it's a very large and growing not for profit. Uh, it started out uh, to for to provide dollars to for prostate cancer awareness, uh, and then over time, it's been it's grown to be all everything having to do with uh, becoming a healthy man, physical health mental health, emotional health. And not only do they raise money for research, they provide amazing programming. Uh, and that's programming that we don't have to pay for. It is, it's provided free to us as their partner, which, uh, you know, the average age at the Office of Administration is 25. And they just don't have the expertise. 
So we get this expertise from our partner that we're able to then build into the Ideal Man program throughout the, the four years. Uh, and it is, uh, it's is—it's been a godsend to have that, that available. Plus, the guys really like growing mustaches, looking silly for a month, and raising money for a good cause. So it, it, uh, it allows us to, 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 to have a, a symbolic way for our guys to come together around this topic. Art Vania wanted to let you know that he uh, would like to be on the list to be engaged when we start rolling out alumni um, engagement and enrichment programs. Uh, do you have an estimate on that rollout? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to give Art a shout out because Art, I, I use your name here probably once a month when I get mad about this topic, and I'll give everybody an understanding why. So I met Art at the at the uh, I went to Cal Poly last year uh, for their uh, alumni weekend. I'm talking to this really cool guy, like, I really like this guy. And we st well, I find out that he's from Laguna Beach, and I lived in Laguna Beach. And then I find out that he lived on Brook Street, and I lived on Oak Street. His house was adjacent to my house for 17 years, and we didn't know each other. And that is absolutely unacceptable. We could have been friends for 17 years, um, but we just didn't know because we didn't have that tool to be able to provide connection. So, so Art, you're the rallying cry around here for what we're trying to build when it comes to, to, to uh, interactivity. Uh, we are working uh, to build the, the technology footprint where we're also working with other partners, working with three other fraternities, three other sororities, because this is something that is gonna be pretty expensive. We're gonna try to figure out how we can share the load and, and, and share the, uh, the platform. Uh, you know, I'm happy to give you a call in the, in the next 60 days and, and give you a progress report. I think we're gonna be able to have something we can present to the Grand High Zeta in January, and then really start to, to build out in Q, our Q3 and Q1 of next year. Uh, Mike is all things uh, tech. It, does my timeline sound like it's right? <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, sir. Good. <laughs> uh, Ronald, uh, raise his hand again. Ron Madreski. Ron, you're back on. Okay, I'm sorry. I also wanted to compliment you. I didn't get a chance to put the compliment in. I think you're hitting right in the key area that our country needs most right now for young people. Um, I've seen that at universities. I'm involved with things like FIRST Robotics, uh, other STEM projects, and getting young people into the, that pipeline. But they're all looking for something that they want to be part of. And I was looking at the that the model and one of the key words is loyalty. Uh, we seem to have lost loyalty in our society at all levels. Uh, when I was growing up, there was plenty of it. And I, I worked in the aerospace industry and I was around the military all the time. And that was one of the most loyal areas I've ever saw is our military. That's been changing over the last 10 years also. And so uh, if for you to interject this type of a program, I think is absolutely the right timing. And it's a matter of obviously getting the funding you need, but getting a lot of alumni to engage uh, in not just the money part, but uh, spending time with these young people, because that's what they're really looking for. And then you'll start building up this loyalty, I hope, <laughs> in the next generation. Yeah, can, I, can I throw out one more stat? Mm -hmm. You like your stats. I you know. like my stats. I, it lets you know if you're on track. That's right. Uh, this is a number that often blows people away that I, I think cements your point. Uh, of our associate member class last year, 31% came to school without a father in the home throughout their high school experience. So they have not had this male role model, this, this mentor in their life uh, that we need. So we, we have to figure out how we're going to pull that level of love and support um, into their life at the earliest stage possible. And we're dedicated to ensuring that happens. The, uh, I'd just like to jump in too, because you talk about mentorship, Ron, and I know uh, the brothers on this uh, webinar that you've been involved and active in it. One of the things I wanna tell you though about this generation that I've been finding, I meet with a lot of donors throughout the year and they'll always complain, hey, I signed up to be a mentor, but the kid never called me. You, you scare them. <laughs> if you're the CFO of Bert, you scare them, right? They actually, you have to be willing in the mentoring relationship I found with this generation to actually reach out to them and be inviting 
and maybe be persistent with it to remind them you're there. Once they get that relationship, they're going to crave it as uh, Troy's talking about, but you've got to, you got to reach out. I mean, I, to be a passive mentor and just be, they can call me anytime they want. That's not going to happen. I'm just telling you that. So as side of the phone, exactly. They don't know how to do the phone. I was just talking with somebody about that. I got to teach them how to dial a number, you know, but, but the, but the point being, the point being is that as we go down this road and as we get to a place where there's mentoring and opportunities, if you're going to sign on for that, you've got to be the one doing the outreach. I'm just letting you know, this is what I've heard from donors that have complained because they've signed up for it, but the guy's never called them. Okay. So, so just going to say my piece on that. I'll get off my soapbox. I'll hand it over to Steve. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I've done mentoring through my university program and I can't tell you how many times, Dan, that uh, I, you know, and you have to also recognize that communication channels are different. Totally. Uh, I found that if I texted, uh, they would respond. And if I called them, they never called me back. So, you know, you got to learn new things. They do. The, the texting yeah. is amazing how much texting they do. Uh, I guess we get, all got to get Snapchat accounts. They propose do. through text. No. Yes. Could you imagine if your daughter got proposed through text? I can imagine what my wife would do. <laughs> uh, we, we did have another comment in the chat uh, from Mike Johnson. So I think uh, Steve and, and Drew can relate to this. Uh, but don't forget about the many uh, inactive chapters and those members as resources for the current active chapters out there. Even if they're uh, not part of the original campus location, these brothers remain in touch even after uh, graduation. Yeah, I would say absolutely. I, I mentioned before, my, my Zeta is uh, long gone, uh, but there's still great opportunities at a national level and at, at a local level to participate and, and volunteer. And we welcome all brothers to do that. Okay, we'll, we'll give you one last uh, second for a question. And I'm gonna just see if our panelists wanna say anything else for the good of the order before we go. Thank you. Yeah, just thank you for everything that you do every day for Lane Bikai. All right, brothers, until next time, uh, we'll catch you on the next webinar. It'll be coming up here uh, in the new year, so we'll keep you tuned in. Thanks so much for jumping on board. Uh, have a great uh, evening, rest of the weekend, rest of the month of October, until November 2nd, Founders Day Challenge. Great. We'll see you there. Later.